Reading a medical research paper can be difficult and time consuming. Today, I will share some of my tips on how to read a paper fast and effectively. This is Dr. Jia from Publish MD, here to guide clinicians publish papers and achieve their academic goals. I used to take hours to read a paper, and what's worse, I will forget the information at the end of it. I have changed my strategy and it saves me hours. First, I'm going to start with the things that you do not need to do. Number one, you do not need to be a speed reader. The rate limiting step when you're reading a medical research paper is not how fast your eyes read through the words. It's more of the processing, how much you understand the information and where you find the information. Number two, you do not need to read the whole paper in detail. Number three, you do not need to read the paper in sequence from the start to the end. This is not a novel where you have to read the paper in sequence to make sense of the story. Strategy number one, know the structure of your paper. I'm not just talking about the structure in, in the sense of the sections, but also the invisible structure behind each individual section. When you know where the things are and how to find them, that is already half the battle. The title. The title will typically have the population, your target group, the condition, and sometimes it will include the methods and the main results. The abstract is a snapshot of the whole paper. First, it will have the introduction or the specific aim. Then it will have the method, study design, and the sample population. Then in the results, the key main findings and the conclusion sentence. Now, the main body of the paper, the introduction section. The introduction section typically has three paragraphs. The first two paragraphs are to define the problem, introduce the problem, also describe what has been done in the field and why more study needs to be done. In paragraph three or the last paragraph is usually where the authors describe the study aims. In the method section, the authors will describe the study design. Then they will go into the detail on the who, the what, and the how. The who is your patient, the setting, and then the what is, what are you measuring? What's the definition? What is the outcome you are looking at? The how is the statistical analysis. The results section is where the authors describe the study findings. You have two parts, the tables and the figures, and also the written part. What you will find in the results section will be somewhat variable because it will go in sequence of importance. The discussion section. Here, there's also an invisible structure. In the first paragraph is typically a summary paragraph. This is a summary of what the authors did, why they did it, and the summary of the key findings. Then you have the middle paragraphs where the authors are comparing their study findings and what has been done in the field. Then the final paragraph in the discussion section is typically the limitation and strength paragraph. The conclusion paragraph, which is typically two to three sentences. And at the end, you will have the reference list. Strategy number two, be clear about the goal of reading. When you're reading a paper, you need to put different hats on. As a clinician, when you're reading a paper, usually it's because you have a specific question that you want to answer for. You may want the evidence on which test is the best for screening or you want to know which medication is the best for your patient's long-term outcomes. Now, when you're doing a research project, you will be putting a researcher hat on. The goal of reading of your paper depends on the stage of your research project. For example, what you're looking for during the idea generation phase will be different from when you're writing your manuscript. You may think, I'm not a researcher, I don't need this. But as long as you're doing any scholarly activity, such as writing case report, case series, or doing a quality improvement project, the strategy here will still apply. So be sure to stick around to the end to learn all the strategies. If you're reading a paper to answer a specific question, this is called inquiry-based reading or inquiry-based learning. When you're intentional about what you want and what you're looking for, you can find the information quicker and you tend to remember it better. When I'm reading a paper for this purpose, I go through a three-step process. Step one, have a specific question in mind. Step two, find the answers. And step three, can I trust the answers? Let's dive deeper. Step one, have a specific question in mind. 
What I mean by specific question is the questions that you get day to day when you're rounding or when you're seeing your patients in the clinic. For example, is drug A better than drug B in terms of long-term outcomes? Is there any side effect? Then another question you have could be, is this test good for lung cancer screening? Step two, find the answers. Here, what I would start off with is scanning the whole paper to get a general sense of the paper. First, look at the title and the abstract. Here, I will get the sense of whether the paper is even suitable to answer my question. Then to look for more specific answers, I will look at the results section. I will first scan the headings to make sure that these are the outcomes I'm looking for and read the tables and also the figures. Step three, can I trust the answer? Why do we care about this? Number one is because when we are asking these questions, it is to help your patient. You don't want to be reading at the surface level and give the wrong information to your patient. Now, going back to the example, is drug A better than drug B in terms of long-term outcomes? As I read through the paper, I will have some internal questions in mind. Is this study design suitable to answer the question? Is the population in the study similar to my own patient? What about the outcomes? Is the outcome something my patient care about or something I care about? If the result is better, how much better? Is there any side effects? And now these information will be sprinkled across the methods and the results section. Then in the discussion section, here I will read to see how the authors are interpreting their study findings in context of the research field. Is their finding similar to what other studies have found or different and why? Because you've read the paper with intention, you will remember your paper a lot better. If you are interested in watching a full video on how to do a critical appraisal of a journal article, please let me know below. Now, reading strategies for your research project. Stage one, the idea generation phase or finding the research gap phase. Here, you are looking for the research problem and the research gap. Explore the areas that has not been studied before. If you find an area that has been explored, then you can go deeper or find an angle how you can study this problem in a different way. As with the strategy before, again, start with scanning the title and the abstract to make sure if this is the right paper for you. And if it's a suitable paper, now you can dive deeper. Here, I want to start with the introduction section. That's because I want to know how the researchers in my field is looking at the problem which angle they think is important and what is not, and how they're framing the gaps and the issues. Next, I will look into the methods and results to get the nuances of the study. Perhaps my new study could be using a different population or using a different setting, or perhaps I can use a different study method. The author could have used a survey study. So maybe what I can do is do a qualitative study to do a deep dive. Next, I will also look at the limitation section because here is the clue where future directions are heading. Stage two, designing your study. At this stage, you will be focusing a lot on the methodology section. And before you are just scanning the methods, looking at the headings, but here you are looking at the study design to the detail because you want to do the proper method to study your patients. You want to learn from the mistakes from the other researchers. And finally, you can also anticipate problems that may arise. What are you looking for? Look at the outcomes. What are the common outcomes measured in the field? What variables they chose? How they justify it? What study instruments they use? Is it validated? Is it not? How do they calculate the sample size? How did they try to ensure good study follow-up? Or to reduce dropout rates? How did they try to limit the bias? In terms of anticipating problems, I would also recommend reading the discussion section in detail because typically the authors will explain if there's any other issues that occur during the study. Stage three, writing the manuscript. Now you have the data and you need to write it up. At this stage, you will be forming arguments and you want to compare your result finding with other study findings. So now when you're reading the journal articles, you will be focusing a lot more on the results and also the discussion section. If it is an interesting finding, or unanticipated finding, how did they explain the results? And at this stage, you may be also looking at references to cite, particularly in the introduction and discussion section. What people typically do is to follow the citation and the references used in other paper. 
You can absolutely do that because it saves time, but be sure to read the original paper. Make sure the cited reference is of a reputable journal, it's recent, and the results must be valid. You want to be following good citation practices. I know conducting a research project from beginning to the end is a very overwhelming process. So I have created the idea to paper blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven step process from idea generation to paper submission. Be sure to get a copy in the description below. Now that you have done your reading, it's time to write. Please click on the screen to watch a video on how to outline a medical research paper. See you in the next video.